Bonjour and bienvenue to a rather soggy London and the Tower Pier where Pollant's new ship Le Bello is waiting to take us away from this wet UK weather to warm and sunny France. At only 131 metres in length, this ship is one of the only few that can fit under Tower Bridge and into this prestigious berth in the heart of the city. Actually, this weather is awful, so let's use the power of the edit to take us to France right now, shall we? Welcome to Enfleur in France, at the mouth of the River Seine, which flows right through the heart of Paris, 355 kilometres upriver from here. But that's another story, and vlog probably. Let's talk about the ship. Le Bello is the fifth of six ships of the Explorer class of expedition cruise ships in the Ponant fleet. Each ship in the Explorer class has been named after a famous French explorer, and Le Bello is named after Joseph René Bello, a French naval officer and Arctic explorer. Le Bello was delivered to Ponant in March 2020. In fact, she's been christened today in a small private ceremony here in Enfleur. You can see the champagne ready to be smashed, and the guest list doesn't include us, but does include members of Joseph René Bello's family, which is a very lovely thing. While the ship's company and important guests are distracted with ceremonial festivities, let's sneak inside and have a good look around, shall we? You enter the ship into this spacious and beautifully modern reception area, which includes a reception and concierge desk, an excursions desk, the ship's administrative services, and a future cruise sales office. Also here is this generously sized boutique, which sells clothing, jewelry, beauty products, postcards, and various Ponant branded apparel. Through to the front of the ship on deck three, you'll see some deluxe staterooms, the smallest of the 92 guest rooms available on the ship, and we'll show you one of these later in this tour. Keep going and you'll get to the theater, which unusually for a cruise ship, can accommodate every single one of the 184 guests all in one go. It has an LED wall at the back of the stage and hosts port and expedition talks, as well as evening entertainment. Let's go back through the ship to the rear of deck three and the main lounge, which again can accommodate every single passenger at once. The seats in here are very comfy, and you can take that from us. <laughs> we sat in here for ages. Why? Well, because there's a bar which serves complimentary cocktails, as well as real coffee and a selection of the poshest teas we've ever seen on a ship. The tea bags were actually made of cloth. <laughs> yes, little cloth tea bags. Believe it or not, that's not the best part of this lounge. That's through these double doors at the back. Here is a beautiful sun deck and outdoor seating area on deck three, along with a stunning infinity pool, which apparently has a counter current swimming system built in. There's a ton of seating options out here too, as well as an outdoor bar and grill. pool overlooks this huge marina deck right at the back, which boasts a hydraulic platform that can be height adjusted for zodiac embarkation, for expeditions or lowered below the waterline, for paddling in the sea or easy access to water sports toys like kayaks and paddle boards. It's the most beautifully designed marina deck we've seen on any ship, and it's what Ponant does exceptionally well across its fleet. Let's go up these stairs to deck four, where you'll find another outdoor seating area, which brings the adjacent restaurant outside on warmer cruises. I love these little wings to this deck, where you can sit at your table for an unhindered 270 degree view all of your own. Go inside from this outdoor area and you'll encounter the restaurant, the charming main dining venue that, like many of the venues, can accommodate every single guest at once for breakfast, lunch and dinner. Here's what the breakfast setup looks like. And here's the dinner layout. We've even got a sneak peek of some of the delicious cuisine on offer here following our evening meal. Is it any good? <laughs> Why, it's a French cruise line, so of course the gastronomy is going to take centre stage of any cruise.
Deck 5 is all staterooms and suites and all the accommodation corridors are thoughtfully designed with nice little artistic touches. Deck 6 has more staterooms and suites and we're going to show you a Deck 6 owner's suite very soon. And there's also two more public areas. The art gallery is where you come to view and order your photographs and videos of your voyage from your onboard professional photographer and videographer. Also here is a kids area and kids club should your offspring get bored with all the jaw dropping views and adult cultural stuff. At the front of deck 6 is the panoramic lounge which has a great 180 degree view of the scenery ahead of you as well as a bar and an outdoor terrace area to relax in the open air while watching those panoramic sail-ins and sail-outs. It was a bit windy out there when I took these shots though. That's not the only outdoor area on deck 7 as at the very back is a sun deck that wasn't very sunny at the time of filming and in true Ponon style the middle of the ship up here is dedicated to zodiacs and equipment so don't expect a top deck midships pool area. This is an expedition ship after all. Finally on deck 7 is the spa and fitness area and I was dissatisfied by the rather small gym area as it has no resistance equipment or free weights just cardio. I have made my disappointment known to the management. The spa however was very nice indeed with a couple's massage room with a view and this gorgeous curvy sauna overlooking the sea. Last but definitely not least on this tour we're going to take you all the way back down to below decks to a very special area exclusive to Ponon and exclusive to this explorer class of ship. The Blue Eye Lounge and it's not on any of the ship's war plans and only accessible from one special elevator. Entering here is entering a world under the sea. The first of its kind, the multi-sensory lounge, is all curves and arcs with oval windows looking out into the vast underwater seascapes and lozenge-shaped body listening sofas from which to relax with your favourite drink as you watch the subaquatic world around you, feel the subtle vibrations that move in unison with the sounds of the underwater world from up to five kilometres away being relayed in from outside microphones. It truly is a world first and we can only imagine what it's like in those tropical crystal clear waters of distant lands. <laughs> wow. Okay, I must shake myself back into the real world for a few moments as we're going to now show you a couple of rooms, starting with the entry level deluxe balcony stateroom on deck three. Let's have a quick look around. All staterooms and suites have a separate toilet and the bathrooms have these panoramic windows for gazing out to sea as you relax under a warm shower. Well, you can also gaze in, but that depends on how well you know your roommate. Lastly on this tour, we'll show you the other end of the affordability scale, the largest suites on the ship, the owner's suites, of which there are four per ship. We were absolutely lucky enough to be given suite 620 for the night and it was one of the most luxurious ship suites we have ever stayed in. Here, take a look around. There are two toilets in this suite and one is off the main living area and I guess is for guests. So they don't have to go through your dressing area to your exquisite bathroom. <laughs> you don't want to make them envious of your drop dead gorgeous facilities do you?
just take a look at this whirlpool bath. Big enough for two as well. Not that we know that from experience, of course. Mm, no, of course not. There's even a TV hidden behind this mirror so you can soak and browse. Although why would you with this utterly gorgeous picture window here? Another delicious highlight is this giant corner veranda with a generous selection of seating and lounges. At night, the mood lighting, well, sets the mood perfectly. This suite makes you feel super romantic. Well, we are on a French ship, and romance is what the French do best. Ooh la la. Well, we're almost finished from Le Bello in Honfleur. Actually, we have one more thing to show you while they are still performing the ceremony, but for that we have to teleport back to London. Sailing under Tower Bridge knowing you're holding up all the traffic is a bit of a thrill. You can see much more in our Slow TV special, a full ultra-high definition real-time sailing out of London on Le Bello to the sea. Want to experience this, one of the great sailaways in the world? Click this link and continue the journey with us. Merci beaucoup and au revoir.